1. Genus name, Pachycerianthus, a member of the family Cerianthidae. 2. Orda, Anthozoa, the same class as sea anemones, corals, and sea pens. 3. Related species, closely related to other tube anemones within the Cerianthidae family, like Cerianthus. 4. Distinct features, distinguished from other anemones by their unique tube building behavior and elongated, cylindrical bodies. 5. Body structure, Pachycerianthus has a long, soft, and flexible body that can extend several inches above the sediment. 6. Oral disc, the flat area at the top of the body where tentacles radiate outward. 7. Tentacle arrangement, Tentacles are arranged in concentric circles around the oral disc, with two distinct sets, longer outer tentacles and shorter inner ones. 8. Tentacle length. Outer tentacles can be extremely long, sometimes twice the length of the body, allowing them to capture prey at a distance. 9. Mouth location. The mouth is centrally located on the oral disc, surrounded by the inner set of tentacles. 10. Epidermis. The outer layer of the body is covered with a thin, protective epidermis. I've got some crazy ideas brewing. Hit that subscribe button to be the first to see them come to life. 11. Tube material. Pachycerianthus secretes mucus to create a tough, flexible tube that serves as both a home and a defense structure. 12. Tube composition. The tube is often reinforced with particles from the surrounding sediment, such as sand grains or shell fragments. 13. Tube length. The tube can extend several feet into the sediment, providing an escape route in case of danger. 14. Tube coloration. The tube can be camouflaged with surrounding materials, often blending in with the sea floor. 15. Reinforcement. The anemone continually reinforces and repairs its tube as it grows or is damaged. 16. Exit strategies. When threatened, the anemone can rapidly retract into its tube, closing off the entrance with its body. 17. Geographical range, found in oceans worldwide, from tropical to temperate regions. 18. Habitat preference, prefers soft substrates like sandy or muddy ocean floors where it can easily burrow. 19. Depth preference, lives in a wide range of depths. From shallow coastal waters to the deep sea, often below 200 meters. 20. Substrate interaction. Plays a crucial role in stabilizing the sediment by its burrowing activities. 21. Sediment preference. Different species of Pachycerianthus may prefer different sediment types, from fine mud to coarser sands. 22. Marine ecosystem role. Acts as an ecosystem engineer, altering the sediment structure and providing habitat for other organisms. 23. Environmental sensitivity, sensitive to changes in water quality, temperature, and sediment composition. 24. Carnivorous diet, feeds primarily on plankton, small fish, and other tiny marine organisms. 25. Prey capture, uses its long, sticky tentacles to capture prey that drifts by in the water column. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing for more like it. I post new content every day, and I'd love to have you along for the journey. 26. Feeding Strategy The outer tentacles ensnare prey, which is then transferred to the inner tentacles and guided to the mouth. 27. Nematocysts Tentacles are equipped with specialized stinging cells, called nematocysts, that immobilize prey with toxins. 28. Feeding time. Most active during the night when it fully extends its tentacles to maximize feeding opportunities. 29. Planktonic prey. Common prey includes zooplankton, larval stages of various marine animals, and other small drifting organisms. 30. Non-selective feeding. Opportunistic feeders, meaning they will consume any small organism that comes into contact with their tentacles. 31. Nutrient absorption. After capturing prey, the anemone's simple digestive system efficiently absorbs nutrients. 32. Predator evasion. If a larger predator approaches, Pachycerianthus can retract into its tube, abandoning its meal if necessary. 33. Sexual reproduction. 
reproduces sexually by releasing eggs and sperm into the water, where fertilization occurs externally. 34. Gamete release, often synchronized with environmental cues like water temperature, lunar phases, or seasonal changes. 35. Fertilization, fertilized eggs develop into free-swimming larvae known as planulae. 36. Larval development, the planulae eventually settle on the seabed, where they metamorphose into juvenile anemones. 37. Settlement, Larvae select a suitable site to settle, often influenced by the type of sediment and available space. 38. Asexual reproduction, can also reproduce asexually by fission, where part of the anemone's body splits off to form a new individual. 39. Regeneration, capable of regenerating lost or damaged parts, including tentacles and body segments. 40. Juvenile growth. Juvenile Pachycerianthus grow by secreting more of the protective tube as they expand. 41. Longevity. Some species can live for several decades, making them long-lived compared to many other marine invertebrates. 42. Population dynamics. Population size can fluctuate based on environmental conditions and predation pressure. 43. Sediment interaction. By burrowing and disturbing the sediment, Pachycerianthus helps oxygenate the seabed and recycle nutrients. 44. Commensalism, often associated with small commensal organisms like shrimp, crabs, and fish, which find shelter within or near its tube. 45. Territoriality, generally non-territorial but maintains a personal space around its tube to avoid competition with neighboring anemones. 46. Nocturnal activity, primarily nocturnal, extending its tentacles fully at night to feed. 47. Predation pressure, predators include certain species of fish, crabs, and other benthic predators that can dig into the sediment to reach the anemone. 48. Escape mechanism, when threatened, Pachycerianthus can quickly retract into its tube, sometimes sealing the entrance with mucus. 49. Intraspecific competition, while they do not directly compete with each other, crowded conditions can lead to competition for space and resources. 50. Symbiosis, although not symbiotic with algae like some other anemones, they may harbor symbiotic relationships with bacteria or other microorganisms within their tube. 51. Sediment bioturbation, their constant movement within the sediment stirs up particles, contributing to the health of the benthic environment. 52. Ecosystem role, plays a key role in the benthic food web, both as a predator and a prey species. 53. Vulnerability, while not currently endangered, Pachycerianthus species are vulnerable to environmental changes, including pollution and climate change. 54. Habitat destruction, coastal development, dredging, and bottom trawling can destroy their habitats, leading to population declines. 55. Pollution sensitivity, sensitive to pollutants such as heavy metals, oil spills, and excess nutrients that can alter their environment. 56. Climate change impact, ocean acidification and warming temperatures may affect their ability to build and maintain their protective tubes. 57. Conservation efforts, protection of benthic habitats and pollution control are key to conserving Pachycerianthus populations. 58. Research importance, studied for their unique burrowing behavior, tube building, and potential as indicators of environmental health. 59. Aquarium trade, occasionally collected for the marine aquarium trade, though their care requires specific conditions to mimic their natural habitat. 60. Public awareness, increasing public awareness of the importance of benthic ecosystems can help in the conservation of species like Pachycerianthus.